coveture comes to be an understanding of marriage that comes out of William Blackstone's um, book uh, in the late 18th century in which he um, basically does a systematic um, uh, um, you know, digest of the laws of England, of the common law. And he is, from our understanding, the first one to write coveture down as um, the way in which when a man and woman come together in marriage, the man covers over uh, the woman and she, in some sense, well, in all sense, legally, loses any rights she had as what's a femme soul, so a single woman, to um, be under his cover, so under his, he's responsible for her, um, and they become kind of one person in the law, but that one person is him. Um, and so if you think about sort of the unity of marriage in a covenant within um, Christianity, you could say that there's a unity, but the unity is the marriage. It's not the one person, right, of the man. Um, and so this has obviously significance, um, especially because of what I talked about with regard to the Industrial Revolution, that um, you know you can imagine if there's one united in the man and um, they're working together in a sort of agrarian um, uh, era on the family farm, um, in the family shop, and it's his kind of profession, but she's working and they're working as a unit together, that that might not have caused a lot of protest. But with Industrial Revolution, you have this legal um, subordination within marriage with, cov with coverture where she has no rights left. So all of her property that's been brought into the marriage is now his and all of that. She has no right to contract apart from, um, apart from the marriage or anything. That she has no right, therefore, to, to you know, sell some of her goods and, and have it be to her name in case he's philandering or whatever. Um, that you can understand that that can begin to cause a major problem for women who have, especially men who are going astray, um, that they have no means of taking care of themselves and their children.